Hey, this is Trent with the Utah Avalanche Center. I'm up here on a northerly facing slope at 10,000 feet in elevation. We've talked a lot about faceting snow over the past couple of weeks, and this is that week's snow, right? It's just completely loose and faceted snow. Right behind me, I have an extended column test set up. 10 from the shoulder. So as you can see, the avalanche danger is low right now because we're missing our key ingredient for avalanches and that's a slab of snow on top of this weaker snow that's down here at the ground. So just a second ago, I did an extended column test with no slab on top. Here, all I've done was pile up some snow on top of this weak uh, sugary snow here, and I'm gonna do that same extended column test and let's see what happens. So 10 for my wrist. All right, so with just adding a little bit of a slab to this weak snow, I was able to get my extended column test to fracture all the way across the column. Remember, for slab avalanches, we need a weak layer, which is right here. We need a slab, so new storm snow on top of it. We need a slope steep enough for it to be triggered on, so something greater than 30 degrees, and ultimately we need a trigger. What we're gonna do next is now that we know that this weak snow, once we get a storm on top, could avalanche, we're gonna go visit all the different aspects and elevations around the compass, and we're gonna see where this weak snow exists. Okay, so now I'm on a southeast facing slope at 10,500 feet in elevation. And just check out the difference in the snowpack. I mean, just over there in the shade, it was completely faceted out, right? Now over here on, on the southerly facing terrain where that sun is beating down on the slope, you can see we've just got really some wet, wet snow on the surface. All right, same elevation, 10,500 feet. Now I'm more on a south aspect and you can see I really have no old snow around me, no weak layers here. So I'm on an east facing slope, 10,500 feet now. You can see the snow surface is pretty loose and weak. And then we've got this wind slab sitting right here in the snow. Right underneath that wind slab is more loose and sugary faceted snow. And it's actually faceted all the way down to the ground. All right, east southeast, 10,000 feet. Faceted snow. All right, so I'm on a west facing aspect at 9,800 feet in elevation. And what am I seeing? Well, once you get under a little bit of a, a wind skin, once again, it's faceted snow. All right, so we've been to many different aspects and elevations all over the, the mountain today. What we're finding is mostly faceted snow all over the place. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I have a weak layer, we're missing the slab, and moving forward, once we see storms, our avalanche danger is gonna rise. And what we need to do is take our terrain selection and lower it as that danger is rising. That means we need to stick to slopes that are under 30 degrees in steepness with nothing steep above or adjacent to me because I could trigger avalanches from a distance when we're talking weak faceted snow.